This is an introduction to a family of techniques known as capillary electrophoresis. The principle of this technique is the use of an electric field to separate charged and uncharged species such as DNA fragments in a capillary tube. This diagram shows a typical plot of signal intensity versus time for a capillary electrophoresis experiment. This diagram is called an electropherogram and some of the features that are unique to this technique are illustrated by this diagram. First of all, it allows the separation of many, many fragments with, uh, that are very narrow in width. It requires uh, a very short separation time and it requires very small amounts of sample. Each one of these electropherograms can be combined in multi-parametric systems that allows to monitor many different capillaries at the same time, such as shown in this particular uh, setting here. This setting is an example of the, one of the most impressive technologies that exists nowadays, that is the, the high throughput sequencing of DNA for the specification and quantification of genomes. So today, what we are going to be discussing is how this technique, capillary electrophoresis, and particularly one of the families of this technique, known as micellar electrokinetic capillary chromatography, represented as MEKC or MECC, is used in this particular experiment that you will be conducting in 4111. The principle of this technique relies on what we call electrophoretic mobility. To understand electrophoretic mobility, it's quite important to represent species either as the positively charged, two charges, one charge, neutral, negatively charged, one charge, two charges, and then describe the property of electrophoretic mobility. Electrophoretic mobility, represented as mu, is a function of the charge of the species divided by the viscosity, a constant, and the radius of the species. The higher the charge, the higher the electrophoretic mobility. The larger the radius, the smaller the electrophoretic mobility. The electrophoretic mobility is, is the characteristic that allows species like these ones to migrate or move in the presence of an electric field. So it is possible to calculate then the velocity represented as V electrophoresis as a function or product of the mu times the electric field, which is the ratio of voltage over distance. So in the case of a capillary, this distance corresponds to the length of the capillary or the length of the detector. And as we can see here then, when we apply an electric field, positive species will migrate towards the right, neutrals will not move, and negative species will migrate to the left side of the screen. And the higher the charge, the larger the vector, the larger the velocity that we have in this particular case. From these particular definitions, it is possible to, during an experiment, calculate the migration time represented as t sub m, and can be determined experimentally from parameters such as the length of the capillary, the length to the detector point, the electric field, and the uh, voltage that we have in the particular system. So in this particular experiment then, what we will try to do is to use these principles. But, be uh, but besides the principle of electrophoretic mobility, there are going to be two more fundamental properties that we need to, invest to describe. The first one of these is what we call the electrosmotic flow. Electrosmotic flow consists or results from the presence of negatively charged, negative charges, negatively charged walls on the surface of the capillary. The inside wall exposed to a liquid usually has the property of ionization. That is, silanol groups or SiOH could be either protonated or deprotonated as SiO minus. This happens particularly when the pH of the buffer is high. To counteract the negative charges on the surface, the solution will bring or will show positive charges or positive ions or cations close or nearby. The farther away we move from the wall, the more hydrated these ions will be still maintaining the positive charge. In the presence of an electric field, these positive charged ions loosely attach due to their hydration, 
will form hydrogen bonding with other molecules, resulting in a bulk flow that is known as electrosmotic flow going from the positive side to the negative side of the electric field. When we have electrosmotic flow present, the velocity of the species is not only the velocity of the electrophoretic mobility, but also includes or adds the velocity of the electrosmotic flow to obtain a total velocity. So what this means then is that for all these species, positively charged, neutral, and negatively charged, the forces are going to be added to result in a net vector that is going to be much larger for the positively charged species, the, the, the higher the charge, the, the larger the velocity, and for the negatively charged species, it's going to be in the opposite direction of what it was before, always moving towards the positive side. What is very different is that the neutral species in this particular example also have the, a velocity corresponding to the velocity of the electrosmotic flow, which can be calculated as the product of the electrophoretic mobility of the, of the electrosmotic flow, or mu sub EOF, times the electric field as shown in this equation that we have here. So considering this second principle then, all species, regardless of the charges or neutrals, can be moved towards a detector, which is basically the negative end of the capillary. This is an example of how one can envision within the capillary the movement of species due to the electrosmotic flow. Electrosmotic flow represented here by this yellow arrow moving from the positive side to the negative side, being stronger than any other forces present in the system. And as a result of that, the positive charges will move ahead of the neutral species, represented by N, and the negative charges still will move towards the direction of the electrosmotic flow, but behind, such as what's shown here by the singly charged and doubly charged, uh, or, or singly charged, and uh, species that have uh, the same charge but are smaller in nature. The third concept to consider in the technique that we are discussing today, or MEKC, is the presence of a surfactant in the separation buffer. The key feature of the surfactant is, is, is that its concentration must be higher what, of what is called the critical micellar concentration, or CMC. When micelles are present, represented in this diagram by these agglomerates that we have here, there is going to be partitioning between the buffer, represented by the gray uh, area, and the micelle. And the different analytes represented here by the square, the triangle, and the, and the diamond could be partitioning different within the micelle. It is also noticeable that in addition to the micelle, there is going to be surfactant molecules free in solution. That is because these micelles are dynamic. They are in pseudo-equilibrium. So when there is an electric field, in addition to the electrosmotic flow and the electrophoretic mobility of the species in solution, the micelles will also experience their own electrophoretic mobility, which may have an effect on the separation of species, as we see in the following slide. So due to the fact that micelles are present, it's possible to envision that the analytes or the species could either be distributed between the buffer or the micellar phase. This concept or this ratio is known as the retention factor or K prime. If we consider this, this effect on a separation due to electrophoresis, we are going to have a total velocity now that is going to be the contribution of the electrosmotic flow Another contribution for the separation of the species in the buffer, knowing that this fraction that we have here, 1 over 1 plus k prime, represents the fraction of the analytes in the buffer, plus a fraction corresponding to the separation of the micelle. That is, there is an electrophoretic mobility for the micelle, and this fraction here, k prime divided by 1, plus K prime corresponds to the amount of material that is present or distributed within the micelle. 
And of course, we have to continue, uh, consider all of these mobilities multiplied by the electric field to obtain the velocity that we have here. Finally, if we have these uh, experimental, experimentally determined uh, parameters, it is possible to measure parameters such as the retention or migration time, the retention of the electrosmotic flow marker, the retention of a micellar marker, and using those, calculate the distribution constant or the retention factor of the system. So by a simple experiment, it is possible then to obtain fundamental description of the separation characteristics. How could this be used in, a, in an actual separation? To illustrate that, let's look at our, our representation of a separation of cold medicine. This is an electrophorogram of cold medicine in which on the y-axis we have the signal detected by a UV detector and on the x-axis we have the time of the separation. So some of the features that we see here is the presence of several peaks. Each one of these peaks corresponds to a different analyte or to specific markers. Let's begin by uh, describing what is the composition of the buffer used for the separation. The buffer, one of the key components is going to be the presence of a surfactant, sodium dodecyl sulfate, at a concentration of 30 millimolar and a pH of 7. Due to the high concentration, or a concentration that is much higher than the critical micellar concentration, which is 8 millimolar, we are going to have micelles present in that particular buffer. And as a result, the separation is going to be an MEKC separation. The analytes that we see here correspond to number one, methanol, which is an electrosmotic flow marker, that is, it travels with the electrosmotic flow. Then we have the different analytes found in cold medicine. And finally, we have Sudan 3, which is an analyte that is uh, partitioning or always found in the micelle. So as we can see here, from TO to TM, we have what we call a migration time window where the different analytes migrate out. So this technique then can be separate, can separate not only charged species, but also electro uh, electrophoretically neutral species that partition due to their hydrophobicity into the micelles. That is, the, the, the longer it takes to come out, the more hydrophobic a compound what is, will be. And the limit being total partitioning into the micelle illustrated by the Sudan 3 that we have in this diagram here. To do a separation, we use a very simple setup. Let's begin by describing this setup by focusing on the capillary. The capillary has an injection end and a detection end. The capillary also is immersed in two vials that allow us to have electrical conductivity with a circuit that is not shown in this diagram. The main component of that circuit is the high voltage power supply that allows us to apply up to 30,000 volts to, up, to create an electric field along the capillary. We also have, in this particular setup, a detector. The detector could be found either at the end of the capillary or could be found somewhere close to the end of the capillary. The detector could be a UV detector, a fluorescence detector, or a conductivity detector. How to operate this instrument? First, we need to inject a sample hydrodynamically or electrokinetically. Hydrodynamically means by difference in pressure. Electrokinetically means by applying a pulse of an electric field. Second, we remove the vial represented by this beaker over here with the vial with wash buffer. Third, we replace the wash buffer vial with running buffer vial. And last, we apply a voltage from the power supply to initiate the separation along the capillary until the species reach the detector. This basic instrument is the one that we will be using in the experiment that is planned for this particular session. For more information on this technique, see the textbook Skug, Holler and Crouch, Principles of Instrumental Analysis, 6th edition.